Uh, there was no books on coaching. There was no associations of coaching. There was no listed competencies of coaching. So I was learning as I went. And the basis for the learning was that my role was not to teach primarily, but to help a student learn. And that, um, that made a huge difference and that took me into what's going on inside the head of the student while he's performing. Um, and that took me to a lot of unhelpful dialogue is going on. And I'm the source of some of that dialogue with all the instructions I'm giving the performer. And uh, so I stopped giving instructions and found ways of teaching or of coaching where the teacher was experienced. And coaching was facilitating learning from experience. So helping a person pay attention to the teacher. The inner game sees three overarching skills or capabilities the coach has to have. One is increasing non-judgmental awareness of what is. And that's not as easy as it sounds. People look at themselves judgmentally and in that act become doubtful and tight and interfere with their potential. A second skill is clarity of goal, clarity of choice, keeping the choice maker with the choice. So you're not running the show, you're following the interest of the person being coached. So that's the second set of skills or sub-skills under that. And the third is inspiring self-trust. Uh, people have more potential than they think they do. And they, the other side of that is they interfere with that potential more than they'd like to admit. So the job of the coach is to reduce interference and grow the potential. And the techniques of the inner game are designed to do those both at the same time. It's a matter of putting the interfering, what I call self one dialogue, somewhere where it won't get you in trouble. And then letting the natural potential of self two or you express itself. The inner game cannot not be played. Everyone has inner interferences and have the game going on in their own hearts and minds that is distinguished from the outer game which has external opponents, external goals, an external arena, external rules. And in our culture, we're 99% focused, if not more, <laughs> focused on the outer game. The kind of inner game formula is that P, performance, equals your potential at that time to perform, minus I, minus interference, minus you getting in the way of that potential. So mathematically, the two ways to improve performance is grow P, grow potential, which I believe happens mostly in interaction with experience rather than being taught. And the second one is reduce the fear and the doubt and the assumptions and the beliefs that get in the way of us performing at the ability we can. Coaching is part of the inner game. The, the primary part of it is learning. So it's for individuals who want to learn, improve their performance, learn and enjoy in work and play. So it's the facilitation of those three things. Um, you can self, maybe you could say, you can self-coach as well as be coached by another.
inner game, I think, has something to offer coaching, especially in its origins. Um, but coaching is a relatively young profession, and it's not the time for people to be saying, this is how you do it, and this is how you don't do it. It's um, at best a time for people to say, this is my approach to coaching, or my approach to coaching is this or that. And there are many different schools of coaching that are some ways competing for attention. And that's, that's a natural part of any growing profession. My feeling is that sh that process shouldn't be over-regulated until it's mature enough that coaching actually has proven itself to be something and not something else. In the corporate world, performance is God. Doing and doing well is uh, has no competition. Um, I suggest that the corporation that's going to win the overall competitive battle is those that develop their people the best. So it's not just performing up to current capabilities, but it's how much a company grows those abilities while they're working. Performance can still be the priority, but um, learning and enjoyment need to be foundations of that triangle.